Hello people of YouTube. It's time for another mini bike build update. Sorry I haven't been around as much as I'd like. I haven't posted as many videos as I've wanted recently. Um, I have picked up some more hours at work, which is actually a positive thing. So, um, it's kind of bittersweet though. I have less time for the mini bike. However, I get more money. Hmm, money. So here's what's been going on with the mini bike. Now, um, first off, I'll show you here. I drew up some prints in TurboCAD. I like TurboCAD because it's turbo. <laughs> here's our engine mount design. There's a the side profile with the tabs. And then what I did was I made life-size templates for the engine mount tabs. This is the engine mount tab that we saw on the drawing. These are going to be boxed in on one side, probably this back side here, and potentially gusseted. Um, those mounts are made of quarter inch steel, quarter inch thick steel. So I think we're gonna have plenty of strength in that. The front mounts, you can kind of see them here. It's a little bit dark, I apologize for that. But um, these are actually lower because of how this mount is set up and this is more narrow in the front. So we kind of had to adapt it to where the engine sits mostly pretty much level. But that is as close as it will get. The other thing I have been working on recently is our sprocket. So funny thing about the sprocket here, our tire is so wide back here that if the sprocket was run in the stock location, which is this inner sprocket here, then the chain would need to go about here on the tire. So we're not gonna offset the wheel and tire, obviously, that needs to be centered on the frame. Now, there are companies that make these, but not necessarily for a 520 size chain. I, I saved a bunch of money by making my own offset sprocket. So what we have here is I took the stock nut that holds the sprocket on, which is this um, upper piece here. And it has the threads that match up with the threads on the output shaft. And then it's got this um, shoulder turned into it. So what I did was I turned it from a hex, basically a bolt head, to a round piece to fit inside of our sprocket. And then what we did is I took a piece of this one inch tubing that we used to extend the frame and welded that onto this because the shaft actually protrudes from the threaded section slightly. The best solution I could come up with was this half inch socket head cap screw, which works out incredibly well. It has a 3 8 drive Allen head on it. So that just threads on. And then our sprocket, it's pretty tight. There we go. This is a 13 tooth stock sprocket size, which we got with our chain kit. And we use that primarily for the spline section. On the outer one, we used a 12 tooth. I figured I would drop it one tooth in the front and then I can adjust with the rear sprocket from there because this is kind of a pain in the butt to manufacture. So hopefully I don't have to replace this for quite some time. Now, obviously nothing's gonna be run on the inner sprocket. I thought about grinding it down, but I just don't really wanna mess with it. So it's not gonna hurt anything to leave that there. Next up on the agenda is obviously finish out the engine mounts on the bottom. Not sure how I'm going to set these up because if I put mounts that are solid on everything here, then it's probably gonna be quite challenging to get the engine out of the frame if I ever needed to do that. And then we're talking about potentially pulling the head off in the bike just to get the engine out. So we don't really wanna deal with that. The next step on this build is going to be coming up with the upper tubes and how we're gonna mount those. And then I'm gonna cut off this back section and raise it up to meet those tubes. So in essence, we're making the entire frame taller. Um, that does a couple of things. One, it's gonna be a lot more comfortable for a tall person to ride like me. And the other thing it does is it clears the engine so that you're not sitting with a carburetor right next to your private parts because that would just be awkward. Our air shifter is going to be slightly complicated because of the fact that I believe the cylinder is going to have to mount horizontally somehow, basically like that, which is fine. I can machine a little mount that'll clamp on and bolt down to the frame there. That's probably what we're going to do is run the cylinder horizontally and then have it push, um, basically run our, what would be the shift lever. 
run it down like this and then the cylinder would push your pole to up or down shift it so there you have it we've got a decent amount of work done it still needs a lot of work but it's coming along you know the engine is actually sitting there on the mounts so hopefully i can get this thing running in a couple weeks i hope i at least want to test fire the engine and make sure it runs because i put all that time and effort into rebuilding the top end you know i kind of just want to hear it run at this point if you like the video give it a thumbs up and stay tuned for more videos on this project hopefully the next couple videos here are going to get pretty serious and we're going to get stuff moving along quicker but thank you for watching we'll catch you on the next video